Hi, Tech Crow here, continuing our deep dive into the archives of old software. Um, so the question remains, do we actually have the full source for um, a most professional in the compiler 2.0? So um, let's dig into some of the details and see if, if this is the case. So if you've been following my video series, then you know that we can get the uh, official source code from um, this GitHub page. So, and this reputedly has the, um, the the full source code for the system. However, um, this does not contain the actual installation uh, media as such. So that we have to source separately. So, and this has been the location where I found the, um, the best installation media, and um, this is because this is um, clean, um, unsigned media, so it's never been installed or registered. Um, just as a side comment, those that haven't been following this, um, Amos Professional and the compiler, uh, it, it's been made um, public source. So, um, you know, there's, there's no, it's not an official um, company product anymore, so, so, the, um, so all this installation media and the accompanying source code is, is now in the public domain. Anyway, so um, the question when it comes to this, that this is the, basically the compiled um, packages and um, you have here is that you have this larger one here which is Amos RAR and um, that contains a clean version of the um, Amos 1.0 and then an upgrade for that and then a upgrade to 2.0 plus the compiler so the objective was to find out do we uh, you know to answer the question do we actually have the source code for everything that's in basically in the installation then um, what I did is I took apart the installation and, and did an analysis versus the source code as to um, what components that you can compile with the source code exist on the um, installation media and what doesn't so um, let's get into it so let's get started and um, hot weather continues but now it's actually started raining, so the humidity has gone to like 80-90%. <laughs> anyway, we start with um, Amos Professional 1.0 installation kit. And as I said, this is clean. And this is um, six floppy disks images. So, uh, what I did is that I... This is this is old-fashioned installation stuff. So actually, all the files are individually um, available on the disk, and you can actually run the software from the disk. So that's and so that means that they're not encrypted, they're not um, compressed, and 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 they're yeah. So it's actually relatively easy for this generation of software just to dump the file list. But um, what I did is so that we don't. Trying to sort of focus on the you know, the core components, so then I um, so I took took away anything that was could be considered a data file because once you have the data file, you have the data file. It, you don't need any source for it. Um, and there's like uh, memory bank images, you know, info dot info files, uh, font files, and, and stuff like that. Uh, also, I ignored anything that's considered as um, uh, part of the um, Amiga operating system uh, because you know, yeah, if it's part of the operating system then it's also not really something you have source in, the, in this regard and then uh, also if there are this .amos is um, amos basic source files uh, so basically it's, it's programs created with um, with uh, the amos um, yeah, with Amos itself. So, so basically, if you have the the basic um, uh, source code, then um, you you have the program. So, you, 
so independent if it's compiled or not compiled on the disk. Some, sometimes they have um, compiled it with the compiler so that it's actually executable on the disk, but um, uh, sometimes it's um, it's it's just available as an as a .amos file. So take into account the filtering. So let's go into the actual analysis. And then we have disk one, and, and and this one would expect to contain most of the key files because you can also run Amos um, from the disk ultimately. So here we see we have the actual Amos Pro, and then I also put in a comment here as to where it was uh, compiled from and is it included in the in the um, build script, and then what's the build script for it? So. I can say that we have Amos Pro. Then we have the Amos system subdirectory. Uh, so there's a bunch of libraries here. Uh, we have Compact, and it looks like we have the source code for that. Now, of course, there's no way to like actually. Well, they're <laughs> doing a lot of work. You could like uh, sort of uh, disassemble each execute each library and executable, and then try and track it back to the source code as it actually is. So, so there's really no 100% guarantee that I can prove that the source code that I mentioned refer to here is the actual content of this binary, but, but I'm, I'm relatively confident that it must be. Um, however, when I make this reference, it is to, because in the, in the GitHub repository, it's a snapshot of the 2.0 version of, of the Amos. So, but just ignore. I'm just going to ignore that um, that side effect. So basically, the the key is to check that when we have a file Amos Pro Compact Lib, for example, we just check that. I mean, is there is the, is there a source file? Is it in the build scripts? Um, uh, and then um, yeah, so see that it actually gets generated. And then we have the editor. That seems to be okay. And then the config files, the config file we have. Now what they don't have is this macros, but the thing is that in the Amos editor you can create mi micros, and I, and I think this is could be also considered a data file. So this is where it would store default mi macros. And there doesn't seem to be much in it, so um, I'm not going to... Um, ah, I'm not going to freak out about this one, I don't, I don't think it's... It's going to um, be a major issue if it's um, if it's uh, yeah if we don't have the because I don't think that has any source not even and uh, I'm not sure how they create the macros if, if if it's actually in the basic programming language also so or is it something else or is it just recording keystrokes and stuff so but, but as I said that it's not not um, an issue. And then we have some um, IO port implementation seems to exist. Monitor is there, music is there, the request library seems to be there, uh, the disk validator. Uh, yeah, but this is actually part of the Amigo. I actually, I actually kept a few references to uh, certain files that are not part of Amos with comments, just because they. It, it is actually relatively easy to do if you're analyzing them just um, going through a list that ah uh, that's you know that's not self-evidently not part of Amos. So. But I mean this is uh, uh, yeah part of the um, Amiga OS prior to 2.0, and then I put in the link also. so we can see other comments in there. Uh, fast file system also, it's part of the Amiga OS and port handler is part of Amiga OS. So then we go to libraries and we have the Amos library, yep. check. Uh, disk fonts library, uh, I did say it was Amiga OS Possibly custom fonts for Amos itself, but then of course it's just a it's a front font library, so 
So, and then this uh, icon library, that's part of Amiga OS. And then there's some math libraries, three of them which are all part of the Amiga OS. And then there was a little bit of a thing that there's this uh, concept of um, med file uh, players and stuff, mod, mod players. And uh, this is actually not really clear where this comes It's not an, I know it's not an Amos uh, product or product. <laughs> Or production. Um, it's it's another company, uh, but it was actually quite difficult. We don't, definitely don't have the source for it. Um, but there is a. I did track it down with some kind of a confidence to this here, Octomed um, Pro Mod Player, and then I put a link to the. Um, um, these are these like um, in in those days it was very exciting to make um, soundtracks. Tra soundtrack recordings and mixes of soundtracks for sound effects and other it was just a theme in those days and this is part of the uh, part of that th that um, yeah, scene uh, translator library also part of um, Amiga OS itself and then we have um, in the S directory we have the config file it looks like we have the source for it Ah, startup sequence is just the, uh, it's just the startup. When you boot, boot up Amiga, then it um, runs the startup sequence. Content. That's a script, Amiga script file. I think. It, for example, it sets up the default key map, which I should actually, <laughs> I should actually correct this <laughs> everywhere because now I have a Swedish um, keyboard layout physically. But then I've never bothered to update the Amiga keyboard layout from um, Great, from Great Britain <laughs> or or US. So then I struggle sometimes entering entering stuff, in, and that's just because I'm lazy. Because I got too many Amiga instances, and it's like <laughs> real pain to go go through. Uh, then disk three examples, and then I only kept the H six jokes because that's actually a file that contains jokes. <laughs> so, so R six exists. Who needs it? Compiled from laughter. Yeah, exactly. Included in my build script. Definitely not <laughs> build script. <of> the human brain. <laughs> uh, so and then. Ah, here we continue with this um, med module, med tracker stuff. So it's the same concept of this um, specific category of um, uh, sound uh, handling, which is to do with this tracker concept. So you can actually look it up if you like. It was was very very big in the, uh, back in the day, and there still exists like lots of this uh, data like in the tracker data and there's still players for them and again it's a little bit hard to track down though, what is the origin of this exact modules like yeah it, I tried to look at it in binary format at the file to see if there's any copyright information but in those days they weren't very big at how, on being consistent on putting copyrights in files in general, so I mean, it could just be some random implementation. But I, I don't think that Amos itself made made any of this uh, tracker stuff because it's what they did is they included it so that you could actually play these soundtracks. Uh, and then there's uh, yeah, and then there was on the six. This is a bit of duplication of the um, yeah certain libraries, but that's not a big deal. So I think that from a, if we uh, look at the um, Amos Professional um, 1.0, it, it seems like we have the source for everything. Ah, that's that's critical or meaningful. So moving on to the next disc. Yeah. So this is the upgrade to version 1.12. So then I just. Um, did the same analysis on the disk just to see that if we um, what what files we have the source for potentially and what we don't. And um, 
it seems to be quite consistent that Amos, in the Amos source you don't you don't actually have the um, source code for the installation components. So here here in this case we don't have um, the source code. Pro quite likely this is a Amos basic implementation which is then compiled to an executable so that you can run the upgrade process. Uh, is it super critical? But it would be nice to have the basic um, installation program. But, uh, uh, then we get the first instance of the compiler lib. And we seem to have the source for that. Uh, and this is an info file. This is a library to be able to handle info files, which is basically, we could say, is part of the Amigo OS. Amos interpreter config. Uh, yep, I have that one. And then here again, it continues the same policy that um, basically we don't have um, you know, these uh, programs or scripts which actually do the operating. Yes, and then there was like a, a text file that, you know, on the upgrade disk that talked about files that are, are um, added, sort of new ones, so I actually went through those also. So those are text files, that's basically not source, but I thought I'd just throw it in there for clarity. And then there's uh, some clerical error, so uh, like this file here, in the text it says that the file's going to be there, but um, it doesn't exist when you install it. And then the same thing with this one. So I think that the documentation got out of sync with the actual, <laughs> what, what actually was the installation. Uh, quite typical. But anyway, the APCMP, we have the source for compiler lib, we have the source for 3D lib. And um, this is actually the only one that um, uh, that comes from the directory Amiga uh, Amos Pro sources. So then you get this 3D lib um, implementation. So it looks like we have all the relevant binary, uh, source code files for the stuff that's provided in the 1.12 um, um, upgrade. So moving on, and now we get to the final disk set, um, which is the when you upgrade the system to 2.0, and then you um, uh, add the compiler also, 2.0 compiler. And um, oh, I forgot to mention it for the previous one, but I also kind of filtered out all the files that are already been covered in the previous implement. Uh, analysis, so there's no point in repeating them. Uh, and and this the way this works is that on disk three you have the upgrade, so you bring the system Amos Pro, ba the, the basic system, up to 2.0, and then um, from one and two are to install the compiler. I'm mainly one, so then you get the compiler. But that's covered in the video I made about installation. Uh, so we Amos Pro library we have compact compiler backstart you know, CLI libs yeah power packer this is also a kind of an external um, implementation I think it's this one here or or it, it's very close but it's a it's a file compression algorithm implemented in source or implemented as a library. And then the compiler config and the interpreter config is there. Um, nothing to mention on the two. The two disk has nothing to know. Uh, Any examples and stuff. I mean, I've, I've I've excluded all .amos files. So there's lots of .amos. There's lots of um, aim, uh, basic programming language examples for the Amos package. Well, it comes with the Amos package or implementations of various things. And then here's an upgrade uh, uh, text document, 
not very easy to see that it's a text document, but it is. And then here we go again, we have the same issue where the uh, aim of the actual update program and its subparts. The, there's no source available for those. So. Uh, I don't know if we consider that critical, but it's uh, if the package was source complete, um, then I would expect the installation program sources to be included also. So that would be my only gripe so far, is that um, you know, when they um, said that, ah, oh, here's, here's the whole source package for um, Amos Pro plus the compiler 2.0 that um, they, they somehow lost or didn't in intentionally didn't include the installation um, uh, package or the installation programs. So anyway, uh, from uh, as I said, if it doesn't take into account binary comparison of reverse engineering the binaries and actually then back office-wise trying to compare to the source code to see that one actually 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 has the uh, the or trying to do some like compile and then um, comparing sizes and all kinds of other stuff, then I, I would say I would argue that it looks like that the we have the um, source code for uh, almost pro and compiler um, 2.0 as it existed. So that's at least a good thing. Yep. See you in the next one.